Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WantCulture.com and you know the old expression, appearances can be deceiving, but in these video games, appearances can be deadly. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WantCulture.com and these are 10 harmless looking video game enemies that completely wrecked you. Number 10. The Mimic – Dark Souls Nothing could be less threatening than a wooden chest, right? It's the dopamine factory of RPGs reliably doling out loot for adventurers eager to find that perfect weapon or a fat stack of gold or just a badly needed health potion. Developers know this and know that after putting you through hell that the reward needs to be worth the effort. But then some sadistic prankster at From Software decided that it would be fun to pull a fast one and replace the promise of juicy loot with a face full of razor sharp teeth. And as a first-class gotcha moment, mimics play their part to perfection, leaping to horrifying life as they chomp down on the chosen undead's head, doing a ton of damage and handing unsuspecting players the fright of their life. Spot the evil shapeshifter early on and it will get up on its spindly legs and attack, and with significant hit points, unnerving speed and high damage output, they can absolutely wreck you. Now, veteran players know the trick to tell a mimic from a real chest, and with that experience the chuckling imposter turns from a terror to a nuisance, but even so, any lapse in concentration and the mimic can and will make you regret it. Number 9. Spriggans – The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Nature sprites are a high fantasy staple, and whether we're talking about the Ents of the Lord of the Rings or Dryads from Dungeons and Dragons, these benevolent, peaceful, often beautiful beings always make for enchanting encounters. Then we met Skyrim Spriggan. The Elder Scrolls' take on the trope has the aesthetics down to a T, appearing as an elegant, flowing form of vines and glowing green bark. If only they didn't have the temperament of your average Doomslayer, though, because with naturally high armor, the ability to poison you, and summon swarms of insects and local wildlife to attack you, plus the fact that they can turn invisible, and if it's not bad enough, heal themselves, Spriggans can and will eviscerate your health bar in seconds. Worse still, they inhabit the trunks of trees, meaning that you'll be exploring an idyllic cave one minute and then find yourself surrounded the next. Q reload screen. Now, experienced players know that fire is the Spriggan's Achilles heel, but even so, their formidable combat abilities place among the top tier of Skyrim's most dangerous enemies, and as guardians of nature, one of its most enduringly exotic. Number 8. Zubat – Pokemon Red and Blue Boasting a deserved reputation for being a massive nuisance, Zubat has been confusing Pokemon and infuriating their trainers for the better part of two decades. Their high speed means that they'll often get the first attack in, and if that attack is supersonic, well, you're going to be forced to watch your confounded Pokemon stagger around smacking itself upside the head rather than fighting this hateful little pest. But go back to the original Red and Blue titles and you will see that it was less of a nuisance and more mortal peril. The first time that you encountered Zubat, was the very place where its dubious legend began, Mount Moon. It's the first cave you come across and cruelly one of the longest and most complex, and it is absolutely crawling with Zubat. Problem is, you're likely at a low level around this point and have little cash to afford bat repelling repel items, transforming Mount Moon from a challenging location to a true gauntlet of woe. That with a few bad dice rolls would easily land you and your team right back in the nearest Pokemon Center. In later games, Zubat would mellow into the the kind of nuisance meme fuel that it is now, but in those first games, gah, you learn to fear them. Number 7. Meemaw – Startopia for anyone familiar with Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Startopia, with its eclectic cast and irreverent humor, was a geeky delight, but it also paid tongue-in-cheek homage to another sci-fi classic in the form of Alien. Unlike Alien's obviously dangerous facehuggers, the Meemaw is a charming, fuzzy, cat-like creature which your station guests just love to pet. Having one is great for morale, but also comes with one massive caveat. If you let one eat enough garbage, it will begin to infect your unsuspecting guests with a larval alien spawn, and you can guess where this is going. A short time later, the spawn will burst out of their bodies as a fully formed scratcher, a huge black armored monstrosity capable of wrecking your facilities and security staff with equal ease. It is the most lethal thing in the game, and if multiple guests get infected, you're looking at a potential game-ending catastrophe. The only way to prevent this is to make sure the Meemaw has no rubbish to munch on, and for that, your station needs to be kept absolutely spotless. Number 6. Hamsters Valkyrie Profile 
As a game about fighting against mythical creatures in the service of Norse gods in preparation for the legendary Ragnarok, Valkyrie Profile is chock full of powerful characters. So when you return to the place where once such powerful opponents stood and find a cute and cuddly hamster instead, you likely thought that you just stumbled upon like a, an easter egg or an in-house developer joke. Well, the joke's on you because these are not your standard pet store fluff balls. Though they may open the battle with two hilariously inept attacks, the laughter suddenly stops when they pull out their killer move a horde of stampeding hamsters that inflict a simply eye-popping amount of damage. Cast an eye at their hit points and you'll find that it's pants-wettingly high, so yeah, these are less cute rodents and more like furry iron piranhas. The result is the toughest encounter in the game, one that proved so popular with fans that the hamsters actually made a return in subsequent titles, where they remained every bit as cute and no easier to deal with. Number 5. Tonbury – Final Fantasy VII Remake this was an enemy that left newcomers to Final Fantasy a touch bemused. After all, here's this adorable little green lizard man waddling at them, wielding a lantern and a dinky knife. If it wasn't in the company of grizzled thugs, you'd have been tempted to laugh at it. But for Final Fantasy veterans, well, they broke out in a cold sweat because Tombreeze are pure murder. Because that dinky little knife, that's an instant kill. The glare from those innocent button eyes, instant kill. And don't even think that dodging is easy, because the Tombri may be slow, but its magic can stop characters in their tracks and can phase out of the battle briefly, reappearing unpredictably. If that wasn't enough, it boasts a huge pool of hit points, it's tricky to stagger, and has no elemental weaknesses. Fortunately, its lethality has been somewhat toned down, because in past iterations, the Tombri's damage output would correspond to the number of enemies that you'd killed, effortlessly reducing your best frontline monster stompers into oozing red paste. Sadly, Final Fantasy Fantasy 15 kind of made a bit of a joke out of them, but the classic Tombri remains one of gaming's all-time deadliest but cute killers. Number 4. Sentry Drones Duke Nukem 3D Damn those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. So begins Duke Nukem 3D, yet ironically, one of the alien's scariest weapons is the least alien looking of them all. Compared to Duke's other enemies, the Sentry Drone is pretty bland to the point of being rather disappointing. After all, you fought mutated pig cops, reptilian alien grunts, and flying psionic brains. How bad could a flying tin can and camouflage paint job actually be? Well, how do you like dealing with flying bombs? I mean, the type can be annoying enough at the best of times, but the Sentry Drones up the ante by being tough, fast, and agile enough to dodge projectiles, transforming what would otherwise be a mere nuisance into a bowel-loosening bullet sponge suicider tank. Worse still is that where there's one, there's always gonna be more. Which forms what I like to affectionately call a murder gaggle. Number 3. Stegosaurus – Jurassic World Evolution now hold on, I hear you say, carnivores are dangerous, sure, but a Stegosaurus? Well, wait until a herd out of control of Stegosauruses rob you of that five-star rating that you needed to finally unlock all of the rewards on the tornado-spewing hellscape that is Ela Sauna, and then you'd call them enemies as well. Stegosauruses are beautiful, iconic creatures that any fan of dinosaurs will be itching to have a go at managing, well, that is, until they get angry. You see, a Stegosaurus herd must contain five animals minimum, else they get rather cranky. Drop below that threshold, say from losing an animal to natural death, and they'll start smashing holes in your enclosures, which are non-electrified because apparently the game says who needs electricity when dealing with herbivores. And with the highest base attack rating of any herbivore in the game, they'll smash right through them quick. And here's where it gets insidious. You see, Ela Sauna starts you off with a large number of them, meaning that you probably just plopped down a fence or two and called it a day, meaning that you probably didn't read up on the five animal limit, and now you're up to your eyeballs in rampaging Stegosaurus. So let that be a pretty clear lesson. Always read the manual. Number 2. Demon Rabbit – Shadow Warrior 2013 now, in the classic Shadow Warrior game, rabbits were the object of a bit of characteristically bawdy humour. Being rabbits, they would, uh, well, mate like rabbits, much to the protagonist's amusement. And in keeping with that humour, they could mercilessly be slaughtered without repercussion. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could. And when the 2013 reboot repeated this joke, this time they gave the rabbits a chance at payback. Because killing up to three of them might see the next one completely hulk out, turn black, and start crackling with demonic energy. And if that wasn't disconcerting enough, a heavy metal, yes, heavy metal track suddenly strikes up to let you know that you've just provoked the wrath of the Devil's Bunny. And the Demon Rabbit is tough, shrugging off gunfire with ease and requiring multiple sword strikes to kill, which isn't easy when you're facing something that is this small, this fast, and can teleport. 
port. It's a hilarious throwback to the original game and a clever antidote to ye old gamer pastime of killing hapless NPCs for sport. And number one, the Bark Scorpion, Fallout New Vegas. Now, every Fallout player knows how hard a Deathclaw hits, and every New Vegas player knows that a swarm of Cazadors hit even harder, but there's one seemingly innocuous New Vegas enemy which can kill you just as quickly. You see, Bark Scorpions are small, slow, and compared to the Fallout signature zoo of radioactive mutated monstrosities, so disarmingly normal that your first reaction is likely curiosity rather than terror. Hell, even the local geckos are more intimidating to look at, right? Well, if you get cocky, you're going to be asking for trouble, because unlike their more aggressive rad scorpion cousins, bark scorpions are wily and will flank players where possible, a tactic that combined with their small size and sand coloration makes them surprisingly difficult to spot against the desert scrub of the Mojave. And should one sneak up on you, then you'll find that this little stinger hurts, well, quite a lot. Bark scorpions do poison damage second only to that of the dreaded Cazador. Worse still, the poison stacks and because they generally appear in groups of three or four, this unassuming pint-sized scorpion, which some may term as cute when compared to the Rad Scorpion, can take down even mid-level characters with frightening ease. So keep those eyes peeled, because you never know what's hiding in the long grass. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 harmless-looking video game enemies that completely wrecked you. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter, at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's where I do all of my streaming and Warhammer battle reports outside of work, so if you're into that sort of thing, then come check us out. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Hope you're treating yourself well, my friend. Hope that you are treating yourself with love and respect because you deserve all the best things in life and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? I want you to go out there and smash it like Tom Bree's dinky little knife. Just take life by the throat and say, you're mine now, son. Or something less threatening, maybe. <laughs> Big love to you, my friend. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.